All right, guys, so welcome to part two of my 10 9900K D-Lib guide. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the videos. If you are, be sure to hit the like button and uh, hit the subscribe button down below. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get into the video. All right, so the next step is uh, fairly important, but we're go what we're gonna wanna do is actually clean up the processor. So that's where uh, something like this is actually gonna come in handy. So I'm gonna go ahead and just Clean this guy off, get all this adhesive off. I like to start off with a card. Now, while you don't want to be scared of the process, you also do want to be careful not to break any of these leads here on top and not to um, short any of them either. Uh, I generally, you know, I've done this a few times, so maybe I might seem like I'm being a little bit careless, but it is important to make sure that you don't uh, actually break any of the leads that are here at the top of the processor. All right, so for the most part, I've got a lot of the adhesive off, but then we're not actually done because it's quite a bit of residue still there. And then obviously we have all of the, uh, the actual solder as well. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and uh, clean this off. I like to hit it with a little bit of alcohol. I'm going to do it off of this so I don't get this pad wet, but I'm going to hit it with some alcohol. Then I'm going to continue on and do some rubbing with, uh, with some paper towel. All right, so it doesn't have to exactly be perfect, uh, but you do want to try to get as much of the adhesive off as you possibly can. I think I did a fairly good job, uh, but yes, I got most of the adhesive off and now it's time to actually tackle the uh, solder that we have here on the top of the processor. So I'm just going to go ahead and clean this up and then we're going to get to that. All right, so for the most part, I've got my CPU cleaned up and I got a fresh battery in my camera. But now what we want to do is we actually need to get the solder off of the CPU. Now, uh, as, as something I forgot to mention before that you're going to need is actually some tape. I like to use painter's tape because it's really simple and easy to actually use. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put the CPU back in the holder because uh, this is actually the safest place to actually have it right now. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a couple of slices of tape and we're actually going to tape the CPU to protect it uh, from other things. All right, and just like that, I'm complete with the taping of the uh, CPU. But as you guys can see, all we have is the die exposed. And now what we're going to do is we are going to uh, apply our Quicksilver and we're going to agitate it. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to put the Quicksilver on, we're going to agitate it, and then we're going to let it sit for a while and then we're going to agitate it some more. Uh, and then we're going to make sure that everything is cleaned off. So this is where we're going to need that Q-tip. Actually, yeah, I kind of made a mistake. So these are actually the agitating uh, Q-tips that they actually uh, include with the package of Quicksilver. So this is actually what you're gonna use to agitate the Quicksilver around the actual CPU die. So it's gonna spill over to the side and that's okay. It's not good when you're doing it with, uh, it's not okay when you're doing it with the uh, liquid metal, but for this one, it's gonna get a little bit messy. So. Again, that's kind of why I have this paper down here. Okay, so now I have the Quicksilver all over the die. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this sit for about 15 minutes. I'm going to come back and agitate it. And I'm going to do that every uh, 15 minutes for about an hour. And then all we're going to do is we're going to wipe off all the Quicksilver and see what we've got left on the CPU die. All right, so as you guys just saw me do, I'm just gonna go ahead and clean it off for the most part and get as much of the Quicksilver off. And you just wanna make sure that, uh, it's kinda hard to show on camera, but that it's smooth and there's no like rough edges. If you do see like rough parts and it's not all smooth, you need to go ahead and put some more Quicksilver on, hopefully if you have more, and then go ahead and agitate it again and then make sure it's all off. But once you kinda have it at the state, then what you're going to be doing is you're going to need a piece of paper towel and your flitz polish. And now we're going to actually clean the CPU and make sure that the die is nice and clean and it is nice and shiny. So you're just going to take some and squeeze it on a paper towel like so. Just going to clump it on just like that. And you are going to get to polishing. So, and booyah. That is beautiful. Hopefully you guys can see that, but you should be able to see a mirror reflection on your die once you're done with the polish. So I 
I'm now using this regular clean paper towel. But as you guys can see, this is a beautiful and clean dye. So now we can just get rid of all of this uh, tape and we will then, of course, this is nasty, messy tape, but now we have a nice, beautiful, clean dye that's free of impurities. You just want to check the whole thing and make sure that, uh, make sure that there's nothing else there. So I'm going to clean this up and then we'll get back to putting a new lid on this thing. All right, so now that I've got my station somewhat cleaned up here, I do have just a couple of uh, things that I need left. So I have still, once again, the bottom of my delitting kit. Uh, and then I've got a couple of things such as the screws, the screws that came in my delitting kit, uh, my thermal paste or my liquid metal thermal paste, got my lid, uh, the, the frame, and then we've got the, this thing, which is gonna create some pressure. Um, this is what we're gonna be using to uh, actually remount everything. So uh, what I'm gonna do now is first is the application of the thermal paste. Now this is actually really important. This is actually what a lot of people do incorrectly. I was actually doing it incorrectly for a long time. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to do it. Uh, so this is, a, I'm using Thermal Grizzly Conductor Knot. I'm just gonna use a syringe and just put a very small dot. What I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna use not these kind of Q-tips, but remember those black Q-tips I showed off that comes with the uh, conductor knot. I'm actually gonna use one of these. I don't know if there's a difference, but I just, this is what I learned from Gamers Nexus, so that's what I do. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna mash uh, this very small bit of liquid metal, and I'm actually gonna use it to cover the entire die. So this might be a bit of a long process. I'll probably speed it up. And uh, yeah, so I've got, I've got it all completely spread out in a nice even spread. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and uh, put our new copper lid on top. And uh, we should be pretty much good to go when it comes to uh, with this system. So I'm just gonna go ahead and show you guys how that part is done. All right, so now I'm gonna show you guys how to actually re-lid this thing. So what you're gonna need is some adhesive, uh, silicone adhesive. This is what I've used Ultra Black, but I think there's some other recommendations out there, but I've used Ultra Black. And that, uh, that wooden stick that we had earlier, this is sort of my favorite way to actually apply this silicone um, adhesive on our the bottom of our die. So I've got some liquid metal from that mistake that I just made, but it's sort of okay. And it's sort of all right if it spills out on the sides because when this stuff dries up, it's really easy to kind of just cut off. So don't, you don't have to be perfect, but what you wanna do is you wanna at least try to get it at least in the four corners. Okay, not that it really matters. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna actually use uh, the re-litter. So I'm gonna put the re-litter over our D-lid bottom like so. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, line this up. So the little dot here at the bottom left is uh, for the representation of our arrow. So I'm gonna go ahead and just drop that in like so. Now, boom, so we've got our, uh, our lid back on. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually uh, use this tool to seal everything up. So. Let me get the screws. And we are going to let this sit. Uh, it's got a lot of pressure on it, kind of center mounted pressure, and that's gonna let the adhesive, as you can see, some of it squeeze out the sides. Like I said, that's okay, because uh, what we're gonna end up doing is just cutting that off when this is all said and done. Uh, but as you guys can see, this is sort of the relid process, and we're going to let this sit for a couple of hours. I normally do two to three hours. Um, you know, it's, so they say do 24, but I do two to three hours. And uh, yeah, once this is done, we'll come back to it and we will uh, check out our CPU, pop it back in, see what type of temperatures we're getting, or if we possibly might have broken a $500 processor. Okay guys, so now let's take a look at the before and after temperatures as a result of the D-Lid uh, and see if it's actually worth the money. And I'll go ahead and throw it up on the screen, but as you guys can see, we're seeing as much as an 11 degree drop in temperatures in sort of a before and after. I'm using the Arctic Cooler 360 millimeter 
uh, CPU cooler. So it's already a great CPU cooler. We were getting decent temperatures before, but as you guys can see, they are even lower. And uh, yeah, I think doing the D lid was definitely worth it uh, when it comes to our end result. Okay, guys, but that's going to wrap up this D lid guide. Hopefully, you were able to follow along. And if you weren't, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you guys as soon as I possibly can. But uh, yeah, that's going to wrap this video up. Uh, I'm Flan G, and I'll see you guys uh, next time.